Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so my name is Quan. I'm uh, with Mapbox, and uh, this hopefully quick presentation will just be an observation I've made about inconsistencies with how we map what I call kind of uh, lane fanning, particularly typical uh, situation is you're going into a toll booth. Um, this is the San Ysidro border at San Diego. Um, the I-5 ent enters into the Tijuana border, um, and it goes from, I think, two or three lanes to many, um, rapidly expanding. It's hard to actually say a number because they keep widening it. Um, this is the current satellite view of that intersection, and you can see, uh, you know, visually, this is quite complicated, um, and you can see how it's uh, mapped in OSM. Uh, this is a fairly common pattern. What happens is, particularly when you get to those control points of the toll booth, people will tend to want to draw individual lines, so you can get hundreds. I mean, this is, you know, this is, I think, the busiest uh, border crossing in the world, so it's a very fun situation. You might describe that, um, but you can kind of see if I, I think I have my cursor here, but you can kind of see how small the input is and then how extreme the fan out is. Um, now, if you're thinking about this from a routing perspective, it doesn't really matter which toll booth you enter, you have no choice but to return to the exact same edge. So functionally, this is actually only a two-way road. It's just a very unique two-way road. Um, so if you were thinking about this from a routing engine perspective, you don't really care which toll booth you move through. You just want to model the pass-through of that, that edge. And if you're thinking about this from a traffic perspective, you might want to just have one weight. You don't want to have a situation where you are accidentally only assigning traffic to certain edges, and then your routing engine is you know, naturally circumventing that and not capturing the traffic that might exist um, or the congestion that might exist in these situations. Um, so uh, there's, I actually, as perhaps many of us do, I just, I noticed this, so I immediately DM'd Min to ask him what his thoughts were on this. Um, and of course, he's already had like some sort of long uh, list of discussion about this and about how this should be approached. And in his solution, he, he writes, ideally, navigation software would use the lane count to increase the rerouting tolerance. So you, you would actually just have one lane through, and then you'd say lane equals 16, perhaps. Um, you can actually see this kind of sentiment uh, replicated uh, on another OSM discussion where somebody, I believe, in Spain is expressing the same observation. You know, please, can, what if we just use one lane? Why do we need to actually model every single one of these lanes through these toll booths? Um, now, the alternative is there are there is precedent for one lane. So if you're actually on the New Jersey Turnpike entering New Jersey City, there is a fan out situation, which is shown here, where you have a two lane road fanning out into a large toll booth. Um, but in OSM, uh, not entirely visible here, but you can see it's just one edge each way. However, if you go to the other side of New Jersey City, entering into New York City, um, you can see entering approaching the Golden Gate or the George Washington Bridge. Again, they've used large fan out. So, um, you know, what what causes people to do the fan out versus not do the fan out? And here's an even crazier example in Chicago Skyway: the southbound route has total fan out for every single one of the toll booths, but the northbound has none, even though they both have the same number of lanes. Um, so again, like I said, why is this a problem? If you have fan out, you have to track every single one of these edges. So what if you have traffic and you've only, you've erroneously, you've accidentally assigned it to 90% of the edges, then your routing engine will fail to capture that traffic and it'll actually just sort of route through the free flow speed uh, segments. Um, so what's the dream? The dream is the lane count can be greater than the way count as needed um, but you don't need a way for every single lane. So here's my Goldilocks scenario where I went into the Bay Bridge, the approach to the toll booth uh, from Oakland going to San Francisco, and I've modeled it down to five ways. And the five ways reflect the reasonableness of routing as you approach. If you come into these large toll booth situations from the right side of the road, you reasonably cannot jump to the left side immediately. So having one lane may not be appropriate, however, having 25 lanes may, might be overkill. Um, so you can see, you know, is this a crazy idea? There's precedent. The way Google approaches this, they actually summarize it down to two lanes. Um, and then you can see Apple Maps actually summarizes it, I think, down to three um, lanes in that direction. And then when they zoom in, they have a different layer which seems to do the visual component, which actually models all 20 some odd lanes. Um, so how do you handle this when you're working with OSM? And I think I'm about out of time is, 
uh, there are these concepts of relations. What if we had relations just around toll booths so you could manage the toll booth as a single unit and you could fan it out as needed or consolidate it for routing purposes or traffic modeling purposes. Um, and that's basically my conclusion is, what if we did that Goldilocks scenario? Thank you. <laughs> um, for toll booth routing, um, how big of an impact does it really have like it, uh, in terms of splitting? Like if, if all of them are mapped with the same sort of speed or anything, is it really a big difference uh, if they're all merged or if they're all separate? So the trick is then you have to make sure to update all of the edges and track all of them. So think about it, if you have uh, one vehicle moving down the road and it goes through one toll booth and you're able to match that to that edge, you need to then have a system that tracks and knows that that edge is, is also an indicator to the other 25 edges that are moving through the toll booth. And that's doable, um, but it gets into a whole world of needing to track that for every single system. And if somebody makes a modification, are you tracking it with a polygon intersection? Are you tracking it? That's why one of the suggestions was like a sub-relation or a relation specifically focused around the toll booth so you, that you know those, that's a contiguous identity. Um, 